friends, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you all are having an awesome day, a wonderful day, a superb day. In today's video, we're going to talk about some brands that have kind of been forgotten about because they went out of business or maybe they just kind of just disappeared and nobody has seen nor heard from them in who knows how long. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. By the way, hello, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Em and you're watching Makeup Break. This is your first rodeo with me because I like to, I don't know, I don't know why I say rodeo. I'm from Montana and, you know, we have rodeos there all the time, but did I hang out at them? Not really. Did I grow up on a farm? Well, at one point I did, but we didn't have a ranch, so I don't know why I'm talking about rodeos. Anyway, if this is your first rodeo with me, a circus show, I don't know, any of the above, then, uh, and you want to come back and hang out with me again in the future, please be sure to click that subscribe button and uh, we'll be friends. And if you feel so inclined, be sure to click that thumbs up or like button and leave me a comment below. We'll have a little chat in the comments. In light of everything going on with Becca and them closing their doys, 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 apparently I need to learn how to speak. In light of hearing about Becca closing their doors this September and just knowing that this pandemic has hit a lot of businesses really hard, I thought it'd be interesting to kind of take a stroll down memory lane and talk about several brands that you probably we're not really hearing much about anymore or maybe they've just kind of gone dark, they, they closed up shop, they just disappeared. Like, where did they go? Like, dude, where's my makeup? You know what sparked this idea though was several months ago when I was doing my lip product decluttering videos I came across one of my lip tars from OCC or obsessive compulsive cosmetics and that was what they were known for they were known for their lip tars and I thought man I miss OCC it was so fun to kind of see people use their products on social on their lips or even on their eyes and people were very creative they had such fun funky colors uh, you know Jeffree Star and a lot of other cosmetic companies like him um, are known for their bright use of colors and especially like their liquid lipsticks but OCC kind of started that craze I will admit they were one of the first you know if you wanted a blue lip or a green lip or white or black or whatever you could buy an OCC lip tart and that was your dose of fun colors they were a little pricey. I think they're 18 to $20 for each lip tar, but they lasted forever. You only needed the teeniest, tiniest amount to get full opacity on your lips. The brand itself was formed by a makeup artist, a pro makeup artist who thought of this clever idea to put lip products into these little squeezable tubes and that you can customize and, and mix your own colors. And I often do that with lipsticks myself and you know, having a brand that kind of catered to that need on the market, at least on the professional side, was a brilliant idea. And it is such a bummer that they closed up shop. They closed their doors in April 2018. Now there's a lot of controversy around Sephora and they are to blame for OCC closing their doors. Now OCC went to market and they were trying to break through to a larger consumer base and Sephora and OCC entered into this fun little contract and OCC you know, was being sold in Sephora. And from my understanding, uh, anytime a person would return an OCC product because they found it hard to use or it wasn't the most friendly thing for them to understand how to use, um, those returns fall back to the brand, not to Sephora. And because they were attempting to formulate a new product that would be more consumer friendly, the story goes is that Sephora told them that they only had X amount of time to get that done. And unfortunately that wasn't doable for OCC. Sephora sold off all the rest of OCC stuff, which made OCC lose a lot of money and they couldn't afford to bring out new products and yada, yada, yada. It was a huge financial hit and they had to close their doors. So Sephora, was painted as the big bully in the cosmetics industry and OCC being an amazing brand unfortunately had to close its doors. So I find that really sad. I hope maybe one day they'll resume and, and the makeup artist will come back and say we're coming back with a swing and screw you Sephora. We're, we're, we're no longer friends. You burnt me too, too much. 
So anyway, that's that's one brand that I've been thinking about that, hey, it kind of disappeared. It was huge on social media, but where to go? Number two is Jane Cosmetics. Okay, Jane Cosmetics brings me back to the late 90s, early 2000s. They were known to have these fun, kind of colorful products, like sparkly eyeshadows. They also had lip products and other things that they were well known for. Uh, and they were hip, they were bright, and they were just fun. You know, in the early 2000s, it was all about fun makeup. While they're no longer sold in most retail stores, they still operate a website. I think it's janecosmetics.com. So if you're interested, go check them out. I guess they've rebranded and they've done a lot of new things and I don't know if they're planning to bring products back. I don't know where they stand, but apparently their website still exists and they've, they're have they alive and they're attempting to kick. But it still leads us to wonder, dude, where did Jane go? Okay. Another brand that was very popular in the early 2000s was available at Walmart and it was probably their least expensive brand and that was NYC, New York Color. I like how I went, ka New York Color. <laughs> New York Color was a brand that had a lot of affordable things like compact powders and bronzers and lip colors and they had these uh, stick concealers which I really liked. They just kind of disappeared. I was talking to my friend Sam about this a couple months ago and we we're both saying hey remember this like where did they go and uh, they closed up shop which is unfortunate because you know with brands like e.l.f. and Profusion being way low cost and really affordable you know they stepped up their quality and NYC unfortunately just couldn't keep up with that and I guess they closed their doors in 2016 so it's been several years now you know over five years that they've been out of business when I was going through some of my products and decluttering them I found some NYC stuff in there and I thought dude where did NYC go? Another brand that is still popular in the UK but is not really offered here in the US anymore is Max Factor. Max Factor was a renowned makeup artist in the early 30s and 40s. He was one of those who was behind the glam of the early Hollywood scene. And he had developed a lot of his own products to use because there really wasn't anything for costume makeup. There wasn't really anything made for the camera. So he was kind of the genius behind a lot of that makeup. And that brand exists even still today. Uh, they were known for their thousand calorie mascara and they had rich lipsticks. I even had this really beautiful bright red lipstick that I've recently decluttered because it was just time to let it go uh, is no longer good and I've had that for far too long. But anyway, I remember growing up with having Max Factor. My mom liked the mascara. My mom also bought some of their lip stuff even though she never really wore lipstick but she would buy them anyway. Uh, but anyway, Max Factor is one of those brands that you know has stood the test of time but not here in the US, which is unfortunate because, you know, Max Factor worked in Hollywood. You know, Hollywood's a very Americanized thing. It's like, dude, where did Max Factor go? Another brand that I'm really, really sad about that has just kind of disappeared is Jessie's Girl. Jessie's Girl is a brand that was affordable, but I think it was exclusive only to Rite Aid. And uh, if you're not in the US, Rite Aid is one of our drugstore pharmacies. But one day they just kind of went and disappeared from the shelves. I used to love Jessie's Girl. I still have almost everything I bought from them. They had really great eyeliners. In fact, their liquid eyeliner pen, oh my gosh, it was my favorite for the longest time. There are only two liquid eyeliners that I absolutely put at the top of my list as being the best. One was high end and the other was drugstore and Jessie's Girl was my drugstore pick. I am so sad that they're no longer around because I would, if I had known, I would have bought like 10 of those eyeliner pens because they're so good. I really enjoyed their eyeshadow pigments. I would buy those and use them on clients even because I thought they were really nice. And then they also had nail polish and in fact Julie G713, anyone remember her? She had a line with them, uh, a nail polish line because she always did nail art tutorials and she was very talented and uh, her line was with Jessie's Girl and all of a sudden her line went away with them so it was such a bummer and you know the first time I noticed they were gone I was just like no not them too 
So, dude, where's Jesse's girl? Another drugstore brand that kind of didn't get a lot of attention but was one of my favorites was Jordana. I was able to find them at Walgreens and I remember being in high school, you know, being able to take $10 and buy a handful of products from Jordana. I loved their eyeliners. Their retractable eyeliners were so creamy, so pigmented, and they were just divine to work with. They also had some really nice uh, lip products and some other things that I liked from the brand, but their standout product to me were their eyeliner pencils. So um, yeah, they went bust. I think they closed last year or at the beginning of this year. I'm pretty sure it was last year though. It might have been the pandemic. It could have been a number of things, but it is so disappointing because now where am I going to get my favorite brown eyeliner? If I had known and uh, the products were still available at my Walgreens, I would have bought 10 of those as well. You know what I'm saying? Just a disappointment when you have to wonder, dude, where did Jordana go? Another brand which you might not even remember, it was a preteen tween kind of craze. Before there was Millie Bobby Brown's Florence by Mills brand, there was Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Did you know that they had a cosmetics line? They had a lot of stuff. They had fashion, they had makeup, they had fragrances, they had jewelry, you name it. They had their hands on it. They were like the biggest entrepreneurs of that age. They sold their makeup at Walmart and I remember Walmart being the only main store in the small town I grew up in and going and seeing these pretty like gold sparkly eyeshadows and saving up my allowance, which I actually didn't get an allowance. It was more like birthday money or random money my mom would give me or babysitting money, whatever, and buying, you know, these sparkly eyeshadows. I remember there being this um, creamy eyeshadow that was kind of this gold glitter, and I would pop that on the eyelids, and I would sometimes wear that to school. I was probably about six, fifth or sixth grade at the time, and my mom wasn't too happy about me wearing makeup at school, but I would sneak that and put it on my lids and come home, and then she would look at my face saying, how long have you been wearing that? I'm like, I don't know. I just put it on because it was pretty. So anyway, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen had their brand and they had a lot of cute little things. I can't say much for the quality because, you know, fifth and sixth grade makeup quality is like, what? What is that? I don't understand it. We didn't have YouTube back then. We didn't even have internet at home. I had to go to the library to use the internet. So, you know, it is what it was. So yeah, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen had a makeup line. Have no idea when it went out. They kind of disappeared from the uh, Hollywood lights. I think they still do fashion, but obviously they're no longer acting. They don't really do much. Like, what are they doing? So dude, where are Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen and where are th where's their makeup, right? Okay, last and not least is Mark by Avon. Mark was a brand that Avon created to kind of appeal to younger audiences, maybe those in high school to early college years. At the time, it was the millennial age range, and they had clean, simple packaging. It was makeup that was just kind of fun. It wasn't meant to grab the attention of the older ladies who might enjoy just a neutral eye look. They had colors. They had all sorts of stuff. They had lip glosses and just more innovative makeup. Even my mom liked their stuff. So it wasn't, you know, exclusive to teens or college year kids, but it definitely catered to a younger audience. Um, they even had their own little booklets. At Once upon a time, I used to sell Avon, okay? I was not a good Avon lady because that didn't last very long, I'll say. But I remember having to order their main Avon catalogs and then the separate Mark catalogs. Mark also had fragrances and they had uh, some clothing items, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and, and accessories. But their makeup was really what they were well known for. And they had nice makeup. I, I don't recall any products that I tried from them that I didn't really like. I haven't tried Avon in so many years at this point, but I think I need to hit up my local Avon lady and say, hey, I want to order some stuff. I'm going to see how this stuff works, if it's if it's still good or if, if anything has changed. But yeah, Mark by Avon is no longer around. 
Um, I guess they ended in 2019 when they attempted to streamline their branding and kind of bring everything back under the Avon name. So I'm eager to look at some of their product offerings and see if it's now kind of catering to a more youthful audience, if they're being influenced by YouTube and social media and the kinds of trends that you'll see there, if their products will reflect that. So let me know if that would be something you're interested in me doing a video on. If you're interested in Avon and if there's products that you want to see maybe my thoughts on, so on and so forth. So leave that comment below if that's something you want to see. That leaves me to say, dude, where's Mark by Avon? <laughs> Alright guys, I hope this video was interesting to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are there any brands here that you're surprised that, you know, are no longer around? Are there any other brands that we've forgotten about that maybe we should take a walk back down memory lane and say, hey, I remember you. Dude, where'd you go? Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay electric as always. Mwah. Bye!